Kevin Williams from Shore Sports Network with a special feature today. Now, you might remember back in March and even into April, we had a little fun with something. We did the Shore Sports Network's greatest Shore Sports personality of the 50 years between 1968 and 2018. It was sponsored by Sonny's Recycling. What we did was we went through a list of nominations. We came up with 64 people candidates did it bracket style to coincide with the NCAA basketball tournament. We had seeds and everything, and when it was all said and done, the unlikely winner, heck, if they had sports betting in New Jersey, you could have made a lot of money betting on this guy because voted by the fans in convincing style was football great Phil Villapiano. Now, Phil's been very busy, travels quite a bit, finally able to hook up with him today and talk a little bit about that and his illustrious career. And it really is a pleasure, number 41, to spend a little time with you. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you. It was a great idea. I, I enjoyed that crazy contest. And, uh, you know, I, I I don't know how I won. I know I was definitely a long shot because <laughs> I, I read it one time. He said, Raider Nation must be helping him out or something. <laughs> and Raider, Raider Nation is pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, it's an honor to... Uh, to have won this thing and come down and meet you and be at WOBM, right? It's been a million years since I've been at WOBM. It sure has. Now, I just want to let, let, take you through the people you had to beat to win this thing. Okay. Some of whom you might not even know. Joe Montano, longtime very successful girls basketball coach at Red Bank Catholic. Scott Goodale who's the wrestling coach at Rutgers University and was a great wrestler at Jackson Memorial High School and a coach there. A fellow by the name of Jim Nance. Familiar with him? Sure He's done a little broadcasting in his career. Jim was uh, <laughs> big, he big time. He, 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 he does the Masters. He's big time. That's right. Former, yeah. former yeah. Monmouth County guy. He does it. Matter of fact, he does it. All the big stuff. Yeah. Well, Jim Nance at the time you beat him was his time where he goes Super Bowl, right? NCAA Tournament Masters. That's a heck of a run, you know. But again, he didn't beat you. Okay. Uh, Warren Wolf, the legendary Brick High School football coach, Great I know coach. you're familiar with. Great coach, and Warren and my father were very, very good yeah. friends. Right. Christy Pierce Rampone, maybe the greatest female athlete in the history of the Jersey Shore, certainly one of them, a great professional soccer career. And then in the finals, the baseball player from Tom Zuber, currently with the New York Mets, Todd Frazier, you took them all down. I took them down. And you didn't tackle any of them. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I think my body would break. But yeah, Todd Frazier, oh my God, I remember his Little League career. Yeah. That's how old I am. Right? <laughs> you know, he was a young kid, but man, he's, he's, a, he's a, done a great job and been great for the shore and he's off with the Mets now. I love it. I kind of like him at the Yankees, but uh, I'll take him as a Met too. He's, uh, as long as he's still playing and representing us. Beautiful. But it was obviously nice that there were a lot of people, especially in Monmouth County, who you have connections to from your days there, from Asbury Park and Ocean Township, and of course the day camp, the camp that your family is uh, you know, involved with. Yeah. They sort of, every week, Phil Villapiano's name is just going to the top. <laughs> well, we do get a lot of friends, and I've been at the shore a long time. See, now, you said I was in the finals against Todd Frazier. I've been around twice as long as him, so I, I got twice as many friends, you know, especially at the shore. And yeah, with, with Seashore Day Camp, very popular, and a lot, a lot of people up there. Yeah. Raider Nation, pretty popular, you know, and uh, plus, uh, you know, my Villapiano family, we played a lot of, we've been here, my dad's, you know, and my mother. All the fame, or sure, your dad, yeah. yeah. So that's it, you know, we had, we had a big base to draw from. And while your career has been over for a long time, your name has been out there a little bit because there's been some scuttlebutt in recent years, a, a, a strong movement to get you into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, right? Well, I'm, I'm on the ballot for uh, 2019, and it's the senior ballot. So it, uh, it, they do two, like this year, right? one next year. So one guy out of all the retirees will get in. I'm on the ballot. Who knows? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I look at, you know, pro football, and if, if you look at the credentials, you know, I got the Super Bowl, I got the Pro Bowls, I got the Rookie of the Year, I got longevity, you know, 13 years, got all that stuff. And, uh, you know, I think what they're looking for nowadays is maybe a little more than that. Did you retire and did you do something with your life to make the NFL look better? You know, and did you help people? 
and I've done a lot of that. So say, we'll, you, we'll you, you've certainly done a lot of that, not just your, your business accomplishments, but your charitable work uh, through you know the, some of the things we've had in the Shore area in recent years, some of the catastrophes. You've been involved in all that, so it's stayed in the forefront of that. Yeah, Kevin, that's, that's been good, and it's just what you got to do. Yeah. I think you got to do. I think, you, hey, you've got to a certain level, and you can help. And if you don't help, shame on you. So I've always been out there. I've done a lot of work. I'll never forget my rookie year. Uh, my brother's a fireman. And if you remember the Jerry Lewis telethon. Yeah, sure. Jerry Lewis, the fireman, were always there with Jerry Lewis. They'd come on, give him money from everywhere. Well, my brother gets me involved because he's a fireman in Asbury Park. I got to be part <laughs> of the Muscular Dystrophy telethon. And that worked well for, you know, yeah. 40 years. So we've done a lot for people. Are you still a football fan today? Do you, yeah. On a Sunday, do you watch the games? Or yes. You do. I'm a big part of Raider Nation. I stay involved. I bleed black. I love the Raiders. I, I, I you know, and the whole thing, I, you know. I, I know the game has changed. Everything else has changed. We all have cell phones in our pocket. We didn't have them back in the old days, right? Yeah. So when I say, you know, I think, uh, you know, everything has changed. So the game has changed. But I love football. And I know. You know, a lot of people are, come up to me and they'll say something stupid like, They're put, they should put skirts on the quarterback. And I say, don't you get it? Getting to that quarterback is one of the hardest things in the world to do. You know, you get every play, you get beat up, you know, making tackles on somebody. That's, that's work, man. That's hard. <laughs> so, no, this game is still a rough, tough game. No matter, you know, they made a few rules for safety, but I think the, I think the league's better for that. I don't mind, you know, 50 passes a game. It's more exciting, I think. You know, I let, let them throw the ball everywhere. And then see, see how you play defense. It's, uh, I think the NFL is good. I enjoy it. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we, we got a little stretched with this uh, last year with the, uh, the kneeling down. I hate that. As a matter of fact, as we went to the Yankee game the other night, and those baseball players stood up straight for the national anthem. And they look like a million dollars. And that's what I want the NFL. Hey, it's a beautiful, beautiful fraternity to be involved. Don't you current players ruin what we work so hard to make the best. And we are the best league. And sometimes I worry about our own player association and our own players screwing it up. Are you uh, a fan of the Raiders move to Vegas? Or is that one that tears your heart a little bit? No, I think just like we just said, things change. Yeah. You know, things have changed. I, I am very excited about the Raiders going to Vegas. Oakland, hey, it was wonderful. They had a chance to keep them. Mark Davis, very loyal. His mother, Carol Davis, very loyal. And uh, the Raiders just couldn't come up with a new stadium. You must keep up with the times. To go in the Oakland Raiders Stadium, same one I played in 40 years yeah. ago, you know, you're not going to get a, a great free agent to come and play in a second class facility. You need first class. It gets you better players. It keeps your players happy. You know, at Vegas, I think there's only maybe one or two teams that could have gone to Vegas and pull it off. The Raiders are definitely one of the two. You know, and uh, it's going to be fun. I'm all ready. You'll make a road trip out there for sure, huh? Matter of fact, Newark <laughs> to Vegas, very easy, three or four flights a day. You know, to go to uh, Oakland, it's not so easy. So I'm all in for Vegas. You still wear your Super Bowl ring. Super Bowl ring, there you go. It's a Super Bowl. These are when the rings, they're wearable. The rings nowadays, they, they look like bracelets. They put you them know? in a safety deposit box. They're, they're right? huge, they're huge. But this is, uh, this is cool. This was when Al Davis took it to another level. And if you look at the championship rings of, uh, you know, the few, just a few years in front of this, this was 11. And uh, he, Al took it because it's his first win. And he made sure when he wore it, it was going to look good. And I don't know, for the people who don't know, there's a little diamond for every game we won. So there's 14 little ones and one big one for the Super Bowl right there, okay? Then on the, we won the AFC West 10 times then. So tip five over there and five over there. Then on the side of the ring, it's got the name and position. And over here, it's got all the scores. And one score I really like on there, it says Raiders 24, Steelers 7. 
<laughs> beating the Steelers in the championship game. Al had to put that on there, too, <laughs> let alone beat me. Uh, the Vikings. The Vikings yeah. Highlight of your career in the Super Bowl? Yes, it, yeah, it is. It, it was, uh, God, I mean, you work so hard to get there. As a kid, a little kid, all I ever wanted to do was be a football player. I made it. And then once you get to the NFL, all you want to do is win a, a Super Bowl. Okay? And, and I did that. And um, the pep talk that John Madden gave before the game was a classic. And he usually, he'd break a chair, he'd throw something, he'd do something <laughs> crazy. But for the Super Bowl, he got up and told everybody to take a knee. He said a little prayer. And then he looked around the room and he said, this will be the single biggest event in any of your lives as long as you win. Let's go. And he was so right. I don't think the Minnesota Vikings are talking too much about Super Bowl that. But we've, we've talked about it many, many times. It puts you in a little, you know, a little club that's kind of cool winning the Super Bowl. I don't, you know, do the math. Of 50 of them times 40, you know, 2,000 guys got a ring. Yeah. And that's, that's not a lot when you think about, you know, how many million people in the United States. Right? What was it like to come back to the Jersey Shore that off season as a Super Bowl champion? Great question, great question, good story. We go to the Yankee Clipper. Kevin, do you remember the Yankee Clipper? Yeah. Over there, what's that? was it Seagirt or, Seager, or yeah. Spring Lake, whoever it was, right. right on the ocean. First day I got the ring. My father brings me there because they had an Italian chef. <laughs> Philip, we must go to the Yankee Clipper. He loved the place, him and my mother. We drove all the way down there. I got the Super Bowl ring, all right? And the guy comes out to, to meet me because he's a Raider fan. Chef, oh. Philip, take your ring off, give it, show it to the fella. I give it to the cook. To cook, cook. he says, I need, I need to, he's hard to talk in English, I need to have the ring. He goes away in the kitchen. Half hour goes by, <laughs> an hour goes by. I said, Dad, you know that cook? He goes, well, I know the cook, I know the cook. I said, where's my ring, Dad? Hour and a half goes by. The guy comes back, I don't know who cooked. The guy left and went home to show the ring to his family. I said, Dad, we don't give the ring away anymore. You know? So anyway, that was first night. So bringing the ring back to the shore was wonderful. I had to go to the Asbury Park Firehouse. I had to go to the Elks. I had to go. I showed the ring to everybody at the Jersey Shore. Probably WOBM too. <laughs> Ken, Kirk, Ken Turk probably brought me back on the show. <laughs> kind of like what they do with the Stanley Cup now. You did yeah. it with the ring. Yeah, you got to give it, bring it, and bring it yeah. everywhere, right? So this ring has been uh, been with me a long time. It's done a lot of good, and uh, it's not, it's nice to have it. And uh, just a, a month ago, two months ago. My girlfriend Jane over there. We're in Palm Desert, California, watching the Jersey Boys. All the Frankie Valley type songs, and I'm clapping and clapping and clapping. So we go back to her place, and the diamonds are gone. No diamonds. I said, Janie, where's my diamonds? Where? Ah. She said, come on, let's go to the theater. We went back to the theater. One woman was left in the parking lot. She was walking out. We said, man, we got to get in the theater. So she brought us around to where the police was. There was a policeman guard in there all night. Knock on the door, the policeman comes. I said, man, this is a Super Bowl ring. And you can see, there's no diamonds in that <laughs> ring. I was sitting over there, he says, let's go. So we went back, we got down on the floor with the flashlight. There was, this, this is one big piece. There was my diamonds on the floor. Wow. We got it back, Kevin, we Good. got it back. Well, so, uh, hey. Got my diamonds back. I brought it back to the jewel. I said, put some glue in this baby, you know. It's so, never coming out again. Never coming out again. Well, it, it was a lot of fun doing this. Uh, it was like a stroll down memory lane for me because we went back to people all the way from really your era to today. And uh, uh, we have this little presentation for you, for your office. Uh, you. It's an engraved clock. It says Sure Sports Network, Greatest Sports Personality, 1968 to 2018, presented to Phil Villapiano. My friend Scott Ritchie at Ocean Trophies made this for you and I hope you find a place for it in your office. Hey, and thank you. It's been a long well, time and it was a pleasure. Thank you. I showed it to everybody, huh? Pretty cool. Thank you, Scott. Scott Ritchie? Yeah. Scott Ritchie, thank you, man. You did a great job. Looks beautiful. Super Bowl champion, pro bowler, 
Outstanding player, Bowling Green State University, of course, Asbury Park, Ocean Township High School, the Raiders and the Bills, and hopefully one day in the near future, he can put the HOF next to his signature, Phil Villapiano, Hall of Famer. Thanks again. Thank you, Kevin. And if I do get the HOF, then I'm going to have to call up Coach Madden and say, Coach, there was one thing bigger than the Super Bowl. <laughs> Hall of Fame. Thank you. Thanks, Phil.